This is a brief introduction to Management 6376, which acts as a capstone for the MBA course. Basically, we're going to look at uh, just some generalizations, some things you need to be aware of regarding strategy, and then look at the assignments in the course. So the first thing you need to know is that strategy really is a life life of any organization and, and I don't know if every organization necessarily is aware of the the strategy that they're using um, you know companies larger companies have a tendency to, to recognize the need for strategy but it it um, it can be kind of um, less than pronounced in SME small to medium enterprises those businesses that are 250 people and less but every organization has a strategy, and the more aware and intentional you are with using the strategy, your strategy, uh, the more successful you're going to be. Not simply because you <clears throat> you're you're thinking through strategically what's going to happen, and you've been successful in making those determinations. That's obviously important. But strategy has this uh, that this ability for us to be able to measure the effectiveness of our decisions. That's what strategy does. It teaches us to say yes and no. So, so here's just a couple things about uh, strategy, basically five quick points, but they're worth uh, noting. The first is that strategy has shortened its planning horizon because of monopolistic competition. And, and you don't need to really remember so much what monopolistic competition is. You can look it up, but it involves things like, you know, uh, no barriers or low barriers to entry that... Um, the people slightly differentiate their products and and they do this until profit equals zero but monopolistic competition the key the heart of it is that it's it's an, it's a competitive environment that is is forcing businesses to think strategically regarding how they're going to innovate their product or service so it has more value than their competitor and so it really is a value competition a lot of people say it's a price value competition. That is, can I offer the same value at a lower price? But really, however you want to think about it, what you do need to remember is that it, it is a monop monopolistic competition. It's a competitive cycle where businesses have to innovate in order to compete. And innovation, especially, for instance, especially in IT and a number of other places, innovation is that is being greatly compressed. They, they used to you used to be able to do a strategy that would last three to five years, or uh, or, or in some cases longer. Like um, with with John Deere, they had these incredibly long strategic horizons. Now those horizons are com compressed, especially like I said in IT. So monopolistic competition is is driven is driven around the idea or is driven by the idea that you need you need to innovate. And to innovate is to be able to give more value, uh, whether it's at the same price or not, than your competitor. So the other one is that its strategy is shifted to a resource-based perspective. You'll, we'll get into this in the class. But generally speaking, there are these two overarching perspectives. There's the industrial-based approach and the resource-based approach. And the industrial-based approach considers how companies should be placed in, the, in their wider strategic context. A resource-based approach, which is the predominant view, is that you get resources to give you capabilities to create some type of competitive advantage that you leverage for for uh, for for some. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, you, you uh, I said that wrong. You get capabilities to give you resources to give you a core competency. A core competency is something that's hard to imitate. That gives you a competitive advantage. That's the resource-based approach, and it fits really well with the first point, which is monopolistic competition, and, and, and does because monopolistic competition, remember, is trying to create some type of innovation that the customer values. Well, the resource-based approach backs right up to that and says, in order for us to create an innovative or unique value, we need to really focus on developing a core competency. So the resource-based approach supports monopolistic competition, and these two things really are in many ways, the dominant ideas in, in st strategic research and, and strategic life right now. Another thing to be aware of is that no matter whatever, whatever strategy you use, it's always moderated by structure and it's mediated by leadership. And I will probably write that down and carry that with you because that's an important one to remember. Moderated uh, strategy mod is moderated by the structure, the organizational structure. And moderate actually means to change, right? 
It means if you put a strategy in place, like for a, a, for instance, a, you want to you want to create a strategy where you have the you're the low cost provider of something. You're going to have to develop structures that provide that low cost. And so, if you don't have those structures in place that provide low cost, it's actually it's actually the strategy is going to be moderated then by the structure. It's going to change the strategy because you just don't have the right capabilities put in place. It's mediated by leadership. And when we use the word mediated, we're saying that it's kind of negotiated. And so leadership is incredibly important. There's another presentation we're going to look at that, that focuses on that. But uh, I would say over and, over and above leadership, structure is probably the thing that affects strategy the most. Okay, strategy is also adopting many new tools. And, and you'll hit, we'll hit, some of these will hit in the class. Most of them we won't. They're very new. The scenario planning. Scenario planning has been used for the last 10 years, probably 15 to 18 years old, but it's becoming more and more prevalent in organizations. Scenario planning basically develops the most probable uh, outcomes in the future. And it does use some of what Monte Carlo analysis, right? That, which is this regression analysis that, that bases projections on the last three years of sales, right? And it kind of uh, creates a, a regression model to determine where it will be the sales will be in the future. So scenario planning is very popular. Shell Oil use, has used and still uses scenario planning, but other companies have as well. So they come up with three or four different scenarios. And as the future moves forward, they decide which scenario is happening, and that's the strate strategy they adopt. Lean Startup is another one, uh, or Lean, lean Startup strategy. Uh, lean Startup principles basically say you give, uh, it comes out, of, comes out of the school of thought by a gentleman named um, Eric Von Heppel from MIT, he, had, he wrote a book, which you can actually access online, called Democratizing Information, or Democratizing Innovation, and he basically says you let the customer innovate. So that's happening a lot. There's other things that are happening out there. Uh, business canvassing or business model canvas is another big one, and, uh, and the list is long. But there are new tools. The basics, though, of, of strategy, as you'll see in the course, the basics of strategy are all still there. It's just how, kind of how you do it, not what you're doing. And then uh, the last one is, of course, does provide those basics. And I always want you to think about strategy. You know, some people say, well, accounting is a language of business. Absolutely. But I would say strategy really represents, if you will, um, it's the interpreter of the language, <laughs> really. Um, it's really the interpreter of the language. It's kind of what's the language. In fact, in some ways, maybe you could even say strategy would be the culture or the ethos of what's happening in a business. And the language, you know, kind of comes out of that. The accounting is formed around what happens strategically. So it's important to know. Okay, these, these uh, five points, some of them are kind of hit on in the textbook. Some of them aren't. But I think over the years of teaching strategy and, and consulting and doing strategy as a, and then consulting and then as um, years of doing strategy in organizations, I think these are important. Okay, let's move on to assignments. Here's the assignments. Basically, uh, you you have and the course is manageable, but it is a capstone. And there's there's basically again five points we want to make. The first one is that you have weekly quizzes. Some people say, you know, it's it. Uh, if you're a graduate student, should we have we should we have content quizzes? I say absolutely. I say absolutely. When you graduate from here, you want to be able to think critically, but you want to do that around established content. You want to be the subject matter expert, or at least have the same uh, uh, same information that other MBAs and other managing professionals do, that you can think critically with. Right, so thinking critically is so important, but thinking critically around established practices that work and knowing what those practices are. So you have weekly quizzes; they're not very long, uh, and and you know you, you read the textbook and you should be able to get through it pretty easily. They're open book. The next is a weekly discussion post, and we have a case each week that applies to a case each week that applies to the chapter and the and the knowledge and the content in there. So you'll be discuss, discussing the case with your peers. You do an initial post, and then you do two follow-up posts later in, in the week. But you're really discussing the case around the, the chapter's content. Okay, the, uh, the big one is a project, and this is where you're going to synthesize all the skills that you've, let, you've retained in the rest of the program. And basically, the project demonstrates the attainment and apprehension and your ability to use those skills at the acumen level. Um, and so the project is really intended to demonstrate to the MBA faculty um, so that, that you have the skills for an organizational success. 
uh, in that project, you'll be put into teams. You'll be asked to select um, a case. Uh, you and your teammates of a, of a uh, publicly traded company so you can access all the information. And you do an external and internal analysis. It's a very classic analysis. Uh, same type of things that you've either been doing or, or will be doing in the industry. And then uh, the fourth thing is a paracrine assessment. Most of you took this assessment when you came in. You take it now as the capstone. And it's our way of both uh, measuring your growth in the program, but also measuring the the, the overall um, the overall ability of the program to deliver what we say it's going to do, uh, and and then of course um, it, this is this is a way for us to make changes and in, in, in the program if needed. So and and then the last there's a leadership essay, and it's really designed to create uh, for you an awareness of either your personal values if you're not a person of faith or how your faith commitments will um, act in supporting leadership, uh, your your leadership abilities, your leadership values within an organization. So, okay, that's it. Hey, uh, good to have you in class and we'll see you uh, online.